Good evening and welcome to Flash. Aha! My name is Martin. I am the author of this book, which is published and is uh, available on Amazon for just 99p or 99c, depending where you are, for another four hours exactly, which means I have to stay up past my bedtime to uh, actually uh, change that. So if you're lucky, I might do not off. Uh, with me are my fabulous Flash guests and my wonderful co-host, Mr. Richard Holiday. God save the Queen. Sorry, I was very concerned when that was going when you started saying wonderful co -host. I thought you were going to say Bethany after that. <laughs> uh, I'm glad to be here. I'm obviously the author of this. You all know who I am. Um, it's, yeah. And clockwise, Gary Thomas is here. Gary, tell Hello. Me who you are. Hello, I'm Gary Thomas. I'm a writer and uh, more specifically screenwriter, and I'm also a filmmaker. And, and you can you subscribe. I do. You can subscribe to my newsletter. There you go. Ah, oh, that has emojis. That's so much better than the newsletter signs without emojis. Yeah. If I saw one of those now, I just wouldn't even bother. And wait a minute, wait, 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 hang, wait. On, hang on. Is his in a plastic flimsy? No, it is, it is not because I I don't think I'll like spill anything on it or anything. I don't You're know. You're a plastic flimsy. <gasps> I've been called a lot worse. <laughs> and by a lot worse the people. patron saint of flash fiction herself, Bevo. How are you doing? Hello, I'm excited to be here. Doing well. Yeah, we haven't I haven't done a flash aha for a hot minute, so. And is it true that. you have a very popular short story collection people might, might want to know about? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, uh, Scribbles and Scrawls uh, is a short story collection that I wrote. Uh, go ahead and pick it up because I think it's great. And there's some fun pictures in there as well that I drew. So if you're into picture books, this also counts. Oh, the reason Martin mentions it is because we were talking about books and stuff and short story collections are notoriously known for not being the biggest sellers but this one had an uptick in the last few months for whatever reason so go check it out i have another one in the works as well so fantastic Ooh. i was uh, going around the bookshop with a friend of mine and i said don't worry they've got books with pictures too you'll be fine <laughs> for some uh, reason i'm upset funny funny yep love it though so um let's do the banter bit before the uh flashing so uh, people have time okay. to turn up um anyone have any fun any what now having fun. i'm having fun yeah i'm having a coffee i have like cookies right beside me but they will remain off camera for the <laughs> duration quite possibly we do love, we do love cookies <laughs> mm. Tell us what's in your cookies, Gary. Um, they're chocolate chip cookies uh, from a uh, pizza place, a well-known pizza establishment. Oh, we're going to guess the pizza uh, establishment. I don't know. Are we allowed to advertise? Uh, well, I advertise all the time on this show. It might be. Yes, it, yes, it actually is. It's where we went uh, the other week. Yes, that's what I was referencing. Yes, there you go. That is, but not that one because that would be quite a long distance to deliver. That was that was a good, that was a good night because I penned Martin and forced him to buy me a pineapple pizza. Yes. Wait, are you guys like local enough to each other? Like, how far away are you guys? Ish. Well, Martin's the furthest know. away. Yeah, Martin's the furthest away, but I think that's by choice, really. Uh, I'm about two hours from London. Okay, so that's fun. So you can still get together. Oh, mm. Yeah. Well, you got a compliment from Barrett. Hey, Barrett. Oh, Wait, thank you. Which, which one? It. Wait, what? <laughs> oh, I look at Matrim. And I have to say a massive thank you to Barrett Larry for uh, hosting our launch on Monday. That was really wonderful of him. It was Barrett an excellent Larry. show. It was. Well, yeah, every time it's like, and Martin Lee Hune is here. And I'm like, Okay, Barry, I've told you enough times now, and now you're just being rude. <laughs> what is it again? Tell us how you what, how you say it. You made him sound like a cowboy there. <laughs> well, he, he is a bit of a cowboy. 
<gasps> it's a steel horse he rides. So Barrett has like such a great talent for interviews. So it's awesome that you guys were able to collaborate for your lunch. Um, and dinner. <laughs> what? Yeah. If all else fails, Martin, let's wave the book. Oh, I oh I don't have a book to wave. I've got a Kindle in the version. Book too. <laughs> If anyone's not aware, my book is currently being dissected on the Book Cubs by Adrian Tuba book stream thing. It is. They have a lot of thoughts. <laughs> Available now. <laughs> That's uh, the Kindle version. Uh, yes. yes, 99p till midnight. My midnight. Bad luck if you have a later midnight. Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> Nikki, but you were off message. <laughs> Yes, how dare I talk about me for once? So you may, no. Maybe, Martin, your book will end up on the Book of Clubs by Adrian Chiba book stream if you win a vote like I did. I if I rig a vote? Yes. You... That would never happen, surely. See, the, the, the trick to vote ring is not to get caught. And if you can be bothered to like sign up to multiple email addresses. Just so you know. I mean, I, I, I mean, I could have actually used my work email. And I thought, I thought I'd keep it pure. I thought You've I also remember. got a domain name which you can get unlimited email addresses with. <laughs> can you send me the list of that, please. I have so to say, um, we shout huge. at cards for a bit. Let's do that. Anything to delay the inevitable writing that we're going to have to do? Wait, what writing? I know, it's, it's terrifying, isn't it? I'm staring at a blank page like right now. I know, I've been in editing mode, so I'm I'm like trying to remember Ooh. how to write. Yeah, <laughs> how I've to fix that blank page. You I mean, didn't no, have to no. say that. You could have just like, yeah, I, I, I'm going to write this, and then and then just like pretend to be on your keyboard. I've fallen back into my old uh, habit of finishing a prop project and then going, ah, oh, that was nice. I deserve a break. Oh, it's uh, months later. I should start something new. I've just done exactly that. And I went to a writer's retreat and I was like trying to get my head around my new screenplay. And it's like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what this is about anymore. Tell us more about your writer's retreat, Gary, and how it morphed into a holiday. It was very good. It was run by uh, Roadmap Writers, who are a really great company. And all their tutors are working industry execs. And this was a writer's retreat with the producer, uh, Sean, whose name I can't remember, but he produced the movie Tag. Uh, Sean Robbins is his name. And yeah, he produced the movie Tag, which I love. And so I signed up in like November, the year before, whatever last year was. And um, yeah, it was Speaking great. And it was, <laughs> it was um, April uh, for one week in Mexico. And in a place called Puerto Vallarta, which is on the Californian side of Mexico. And it, and it was great. And I went there for a week and a half, I went there a few days before to get over the jet lag. And then I went for a week after that in LA, which was loads of fun. And I had like four meetings uh, with people. And yeah, it was great. And I got some really good feedback on my screenplay. That's Gary, awesome. if people sign up to your newsletter, will they find out more about this trip? They will. There's, I'm preparing like two or three blogs all about the trip and how I progressed my career when I was in LA. That'll be valuable information. I know there's a lot of screenplay connoisseurs out there. Yeah. Influenced by Adrian. Hey, Adrian. Hey, Adrian. Hello, Adrian. Oh. I do find it needlessly disrespectful that you didn't iron your flag. It's just like yeah, curved at well, the end. I think it's fine. I am sure you'll get over it, Martin. I have, I have no doubt whatsoever. So, um, is it Memorial Weekend in America? Is that right? Yes, it is. What is it a memorial of, though? In general, um, you all your memorials of one weekend. There's a difference between Veterans Day and Memorial Day, so. Veterans Day honors the veterans, both living and deceased, and this one is for the deceased. That's very worthy. Uh, yeah. 
But yeah, it's just because like, we need to brighten the moon now. There. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, because yeah, American is the uh, uh, spinning wheel of genre. Oh, yeah. I thought we were playing the cards first. Ah, uh, go on then, cards. Right, there's a card. Someone shout higher or lower. Lower. Higher. Oh, I forgot what the last score was. <laughs> I think uh, it's lower. Higher or lower. Um, lower. Lower. I don't know. I think I won that one. I don't know what's going on. Then shout higher or lower again. Higher. higher. Oh. Hey. There's nothing hey. higher. I think, I think it's lower. Lower. Oh, you were yes. right to go lower. I think you had to be. Uh, but what's next? Higher. I oh, love yes. Stardust. I was just going to go lower. Lower. Oh, no. It was higher. What oh. next? Higher. Lower. Yeah. You, you were right to go lower. <laughs> uh, lower. Um, oh, Ooh. oh, that's very pretty. Oh, lower, I mean, higher. Oh, that's know. higher. Uh. Well, wasn't that fun? Richard, <laughs> what do we win? I should have been using that time to bring up the spinning wheel of genres, but oh, I, yeah. I did not. So, I will continue to babble while I do that. It's a great time to hold up a sign. We turn off Gary's camera, please. Oh, <laughs> uh. yeah, Adrian that sucks, is having Adrian. a bad, bad day, oh. and we're going to brighten it up. Allegedly. Yeah. yeah, I gave you advice in the chat. I said, hope it gets better. If not, make good food and take a nap, because that's what makes me feel better. Yeah, I took so, a nap uh, right oh, before yeah. this. Naps are great. I feel like we've now got un we've got unrealistic expectation on this stream. We now have to cheer Adrian up. So I should try my best. If you really That's want to cheer me up, sign up to my newsletter. I was actually going to good. write a really depressing social realism piece about uh, the hardships of poverty mm -hmm. in the north of England, but I don't think that would cheer Adrian up at all. So uh, I'm just going no. to, have to come up. With we should funny. all be writing comedy. This is why we should all be writing comedy. Is, I can't remember, is this the stream where we we get a genre assigned to us? And do we have a, what is that? I think that? that's a what prompt? the wheel is. Yeah. Do, do we have a prompt? Okay. It's not going to be um, granny inside. If and the prompt the is not the blank page. Prompts. As it's sorry, the, as it's the, I think as it's the queen like, of Jubilee, we should have some kind of royal prompts coming up. Yeah, but then the Republicans will be out in force. A Republican corgi. Thanks. I think Republicans are generally against corgis because corgis are pro-monarchy. Oh. <laughs> corgis scare me. I've been bitten by several dogs and most of them have been corgis. Little ankle biters. Oh. <laughs> um yeah okay so who who comes up with the prompt is it just the chat I, I don't remember i'm so out of practice no. thanks is for inviting me back we're not ever again uh, well, we're not doing the wheel yet until we have a prompt so oh, we're okay. prompts by adrian prompts by adrian, by adrian. yes watch him pick yeah. grannies just to spite richard i <laughs> think that's a wonderful idea so funny <laughs> oh. so I'm going to be writing Granny Romance again. Adrian's again. leaving for work soon, so a nap is out. But he will eat something yummy. I made pie yesterday, so I just feel like I'm living my best life. What was in your pie? A really blood orange well, and too. lemon filling with a sweet vanilla meringue. So not steak mm -hmm. and kidney. No, a sweet, yummy <laughs> pie. When I say pie, I mean like... Like a dessert. Yes. With cream. Mm, the good stuff. That's not really pie, though, is it? It'll ruin your yes, dinner. It is. It's still like pastry and stuff. Gary, you're there for a week. You've gone native. I know. Yes. Yeah, shootings are really horrific. 
Let's talk about pie again. <laughs> I want to know What's if Bethany's ever had crumble before. Crumble? It's oh. like okay. it's like a. It's like a I think you drop the pie. You kind of repurpose it. Uh, oh, okay. We have like cobbler. Is that it? Like the berries Maybe. and stuff underneath, and then like a, a crust mm -hmm. on top. I mean, yeah. generally, a load of cobblers is what I end up writing on these streams. So, who to say? Who is? <laughs> oh dear. So we've got grannies. We've got. We could literally put pie down as a prompt. Um, I'm putting pie down. We could put um, lost in a strange city, which I was like three Ooh. weeks ago. I didn't quite get lost. I just I'm got glad you got home again. Yes. Yeah, LA is a jungle. Yeah, I would be like ten minutes driving <laughs> or like forty-five minutes walking. <laughs> ah, that's cute. All oh, right. Did you go on the LA? I rate pirate. I rate pirate. <laughs> I like I like what Bethany's very doing. I rate pirate. I was hoping I might I might have my prized hoodies by Adrian uh, arrive, but it has not quite the merch by Adrian. Oh um, yes, you didn't buy that bloody T-shirt, did you? No. Good. I need, I'm I need to get that other one printed. Spread the love. Spread, Spread the, the love. love. I think I, I think Adrian missed a trick in not selling his Stop the Spread spreadsheet t-shirt in just size XL. Oh. <laughs> Took a couple of seconds, it. Bethany, didn't it? Took a couple of seconds. So. Did. <laughs> Adrian is tracking the shipment. Oh, that could be a prompt. I'm gonna write that the down. Shipment that gets lost. I forgot about his store. He made the, uh, what the heck did I just read? Or what the hell did I just read? Or something like that shirt. That's the one I'm getting. Is that an actual t-shirt? Yes, it's on, his, it's on his store, I think. That's the one I'm going to get. I've I also just really that. like the right on writer's hoodie. That is very good. Yeah. Although Stop the Spread is funny. Is it though? Or is it hate speech? Sorry? It's what hate speech? <laughs> Stop His anti-spreadsheet sentiments. It, 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 it's honestly, it, it's just terrible, Martin. I think it should be um, disallowed by the highest power. Anyway, we've now got five prompts that I have somehow cobbled together from what we were just talking about. We've got grannies. We've got pie. Lost in a strange city, uh, an irate pirate, <laughs> and tracking the shipment. I reckon they could all be quite fun. Yeah, there's one of those that take your fancy, then uh, go for it. Uh, it need not are be you, more. Are you, are you suggesting it? we ignore the set prompt? Can you just do your own thing? Well, no, because we have several set prompts, which leads to more creativity. Rather yes. than uh, last time, where we all just wrote about characters stuck in a lift. I mean, those stories really elevated me. <laughs> Get out, Richard. Get out. Oh, Adrian was sad coming into this. I'm worried about him now. <laughs> <laughs> I was literally timing how long it would take before Bethany first tell Richard to get out. Like 19 uh, minutes. I, I, I mean, last time we were the elevator, I was, I was you really did not, lifted. Gary. <laughs> I was really lifted by the effort. Oh, and, my God. And the things soon escalated. Yeah, it's getting worse. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're, getting a, we're getting a lot of quite depressing prompts in the chat. I did start reading a um, urban fantasy about a elf who was uh, scaling a cliff whilst trying to get an appointment with her doctor. It Is was, this a um, summer elf? It was horrifically relatable. I was waiting for the punchline. Is that the punchline? Oh, no, that was the book I started. Is it a summer elf? I hope it was a summer elf. I hope so too. Okay, I, um, I want to um, pick Lost in a Strange City. That's okay, Ben, we're getting lost in a strange city. 
with fully funded healthcare and the end of gun violence and all those other things. You know we've only got 20 minutes to do this. Then we better make it count. Am I right about pie? <laughs> Granny's pie. I never. I just said pie. Whatever else happens is... Pie made of grannies? <laughs> Ew. <laughs> You'd write a romance where they're talking about um, eating Granny's pie. I don't like any of that. <laughs> just spin the wheel. The anxiety is getting to me. I will spin the wheel. Oh, this is this is really good. Oh my goodness! Get out! <laughs> out! I need to make merch. Okay, who? I think we should let ladies go first with the spin. Oh. Stephanie, this is your spin. Yes. I don't know why I'm so nervous. Historical and pie. I can make that work. I mean, when does it count as historical? Could I have it set in the year 2010? Is that, you know, a historical? Yeah, technically. Uh, it is uh, a really half rule for historical is it must be longer than half an hour ago. Okay, perfect. <laughs> um, Gary, you're going to go next, all right? Yeah. Very exciting, this. Oh no, I want the romance. I'm here you for the romance. romance, but I love you it. have to spin again. Oh, what if it's romance again? Well, it's going to be hot, isn't it? <laughs> Wait, so if you spin again, do you have to do romance and the second? Yeah, it's genre? like a sub genre of romance. Ooh. Ooh. Thriller, thriller, thriller. Comedy. I thought Beth and his one said it. Oh, yes. You Yay. did a rom com. That's Basically, cute. Gary's doing a rom com. I love that. Gary's doing a rom com? Surely Yay. not. Yay. It's not fixed at all in any way. Is that I, a, want to, I thought Beth and his one said hysterical. <laughs> I'm going to let Martin um, have the next spin. Very big of me. Come on, genre. <gasps> oh. Wait, you're supposed to take these out once they've been issued, or we all get the same. That Do doesn't it say properly. spin again, though. I've got to spin again, so now it's getting. Now I get to pick from um, possibly some of the safer um, categories. Uh. I mean, that's a bit of a, bit of a redundant because I get to spin again. So <laughs> we can this. I wouldn't mind paranormal. Oh. Oh, no. Can I have romance now? <laughs> mind romance to that? Well, they could all have wands, you know, with a swish and a flick. Isn't, um, don't you write sci-fi fantasy, Martin? Not fantasy, no. But I'm not mm. saying I can't. Okay, so we have... I have to say, I do agree with Maggie's comment here that historical is at least 50 years from the contemporary. Mm. It's when, it's, cause I remember on Goodreads, there was a... I think it was a winner in the historical fiction category of a book that was set in the 1980s, and I was very upset about that. Yes. Well, it's all in film, it's all dependent on the mobile phone and technology. So in <laughs> film, it's like 20 years, because if you look at phones 20 years ago, that's like going to be really you, obvious. You pull out Arial. Yeah. And a flip phone. A 3210. Yeah. The 3210. Yeah. It's okay. My brother referred to a movie as being made in the late 1900s. He meant 1995. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that. That's no. <laughs> I, I, I refuse to accept that the 1990s is more than 10 years ago. Yep. Yes. It was like yesterday. Um, she's on a demo, so she's here for the sprint of mine. Where cow shifters trapped in a thorn-covered citadel 
with a mirror determined to brainwash her into being a proper princess. <gasps> I would read that. Yes, that sounds like something. I, I want to know how he got there, but... <laughs> you know, we'll... Genesis. Well, that's the story. And he's leaving. So, ta -ra, goodbye. Bye, by Adrian. Bye. Farewells by Adrian. <laughs> Farewell. So long. Okay, right, let's get on to this thing. Right. Have we all got our yeah. word documents open? Oh. Yes, no, look, mine's here. Excuse me. You should probably should see a doctor about that, Martin. Got a blank document. That's not a prompt. Okay, I got a blank. I got some blank. I'm writing about pies. That's all you need to know. Oh, I'm finding the timer, so just just you know, oh, just, yes. challenge yourselves for a minute. Okay, hands are off the keyboard. Martin, count us in. I really want to just sit down with Maggie one day and uh, talk about all her many, many books. <laughs> she seems like a machine. Also, I think she has uh, chickens. Ooh. Uh, right, are we going right? Okay, right, right, bye. Okay, Dickie, make it so. Yes.
Pong. Mm. Yeah. How did we all get on? I would say quite well, but also quite badly. Yeah. Same. Hmm. No, quite well. I'm, well done. Bethany, how did you get on? Pretty good. I feel I'm like halfway done. I hope I can finish. I know where I want to go. It's just a matter of can my fingers fly fast enough to make it happen. Gary, how did you get on? Um, I did pretty well. It's it's. I don't know where this story is came from, but um, yeah, it's it's flowing, flowing quite well. And Dicky, um, well, I wrote one hundred and ninety-five words. I'm kind of setting the scene of my strange fantasy city. I guess I'm kind of going for a little bit of sort of like a corrupt fairy tale vibe, very vaguely. We shall see how we get on. I did 266 words. Well done, Gary. Martin, can you words in your language? 113. And Bethany, how many thousands of words did you just imagine? Two, just 250 words. A very nice, even round number. I like it. I like it too. <laughs> how about you? What did you get? I said 195. Oh, okay. yeah, nearly 200. I could have just yes. put a little bit more effort in. Yeah. And but alas. So did you I start? Don't ask me how many typos I have, though. It's glaring red, but that's okay. But the real question is, Bethany, is does Betla live? Betla. Oh, man. I forgot about Betla. We need to come back to that. I haven't but forgotten. But don't you forget to grab the McMurdo Rift ebook in the next three <laughs> hours. Twenty minutes whilst it's still ninety nine cents. Sign up to my newsletter on GaryThomas.co.uk. <laughs> also, sign up to my newsletter at RichardHoliday.co.uk. I'm just worried that people are going to get confused and sign up to the wrong newsletter. They're going to sign up to GaryHoliday.co.uk. <laughs> Richard Thomas. Oh, this is the wrong British person. I wanted the other one. <laughs> Sorry, that was uh, my Canadian accent. Yeah. Canadian? Oh, yeah. I it was American. <laughs> can I ask that you we do something slightly unusual? We you can say no. But I want I'm curious. I want to hear like a single line from your what you wrote. Or like half a line. You can say no though. I will read a line from my piece. Yes, I'll read the first line of my piece. I'm just curious. I want to know. Is this going to be the first line or a line? You know we read it all later if you just have a bit of patience. <laughs> yeah, it's kind but, of fun to know, do this though, though, I think. the anticipation. <laughs> okay, but, I will read a line, shall I? Just a random line. Perfect. Never seen an Omniclox before, the man said winking his single jewel-like eye with a huge flap of shriveled skin. Bloody normie. Ooh. Gross. I like it. <laughs> How about you, Gary? Is... You got anything fun? Yeah. I don't know about fun. Now, now the pressure's on. I forgot I had a genre to write in. Um, <laughs> uh, Billy sat in his Uber expectantly. This is the first time he had a self-drive. Ooh. Martin, are you going to read a line from your piece? Green limes, red peppers, and the smell of jarred spice. <laughs> are you writing about like can't that. cook, won't cook? I was just thinking that, Gary. Is it going to be green peppers or red tomatoes? <laughs> this is actually a very elaborate clash reference. I'm sure it is. Yeah. So what you're saying, this stream should be called Clash. Uh -huh. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> and has, has Bethany read a line yet? Oh, I don't think I have. Um, uh, is upon yourself, young lady. The dark was tart, like a blueberry. Oh, oh. I, I, I can taste how tart that is. Hmm. Bethany, you have a, a, a powerful 
ability with description like that. Also, I love the word tar as to describe a fruit. It's gonna uh, make it, we're talking about blueberry pie in mind, so it, it makes an appearance. Velvety feminine tones, I like that. Ooh. I could, I could say something about what's velvety and feminine, but it's, it's not my genre. Yeah, stick to what, what's your genre? It's not the romance. Uh, fantasy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> could be someone's fantasy, all right. <laughs> I, I will say the, the velvety feminine stuff for my romance alter ego, Regina Hurts. Wow. <laughs> get out. <laughs> <laughs> Gary's telling me to get out. It's never going to happen. <laughs> We're both on the, on the two on the bottom are just telling you to get out. And well, no, I feel like I need to have a romance alter ego. And the first thing that came to mind is. I don't want to say. I'll put it in the private chat. Ooh. <laughs> Gary, if you could have a romance alter ego, what would it be? Um, well, I have an alter <laughs> ego. I have an alter ego called Sam. Um, I don't think he has a last name. Yeah. So, yeah, my boring old Sam. I came up with quite a good romance pen name, but I got a cease and desist from the estate of Roger Moore. <laughs> <laughs> you could spell it with two G's, Martin. That, that is kind of controversy. Roger G. Moore. Roger G. Moore. Okay. Roger G. Spark. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Anyway, what do we do next? What do we do Let's next? Let's be writing, shall we, before I get myself in lots of trouble. Yes, let's. Are we still online? We are. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, no. Oh, no. I think we just started. this. Still going. Gary, uh, uh, whatever your name is, Martin, count us in, please. No, we can't hear Martin. Let's just write. You're muted.
And there we have it. That's all the time to flash this month. Oh, wow. I hope you got some words down and finished your stories. Yes. We have flashed successfully. Oh, right. Okay, I hope so. Uh, let's go back. Ooh. I have words. So how do we get on? I actually, yeah. Let's let our lovely guests answer the question. It's Bethany, how did you get on? You're still muted. Bethany's on you. Hi. You're yes. not on mute now. Okay, <laughs> cool. Bethany's been frozen. Just by the skin of my teeth. Uh, there's a little bit more I wanted to add here and there, but like I got to the end, so that's all that matters. Excellent. Well done. Martin's French cat has turned up. 326. Hey. Gary, how'd you get on? I got 390 word, uh, 391 words in total. Anyone wants to send their work, send it to flasherhalfstream at gmail.com. That's flasherhalfstream at gmail.com. I send it to you. Oh, and, I wrote, and I wrote 512 words. Mine has gone really weird. Somehow, but alas, we are where we Love are. Love weird. That's fantastic. Can I just copy and paste it for you? Because you I may. have may. not got a Word document open. You can. Thanks. You can hand write it in blood if you like. I would not, but thanks Don't for the offer. I recommend that as policy. Are we emailing it to you, Richard? Thanks. Would help. Yes. I just now got the email about Flash Aha being, you know, live. A little late, YouTube, but that's okay. <laughs> Better late than sort of never, I suppose. I'm just going on this one. How do we all get on in chat? That's good. Eva's here. Jenna's here. Mine's here. People are just hanging out. Love it. I want a cat so bad. I'm so allergic to them. But part of me is like, how allergic, Bethany? Should we test it? But then I realized I'd be signing up for like a decade and a half or more of allergies if I was wrong. So not quite worth the risk. Alas, no. That's okay. Cats are always good fun. They are fun. Instead, I have a dog, but that's okay. He's cute. He acts like a cat. He's funny. He's funny. Bethany has sent hers in. Martin, Gary, and maybe even Maggie, if she's going to be sending in any work. I don't think Maggie's sending in her uh, work in progress. I think Fair she was enough. just taking advantage of our uh, graphically. Oh, yeah, I think she's using the sprint thing, which is good. That's yes, fine. Mooching, Martin, mooching for the streets. I love it. Oh, I've got Gary's. Gary. Did you get mine? I did. Okay. Bethany, you get points already for using a correct um, first line indent on your paragraphs. I do. Fantastic. You do. No other points to award, by the way. <laughs> I want a gold star or nothing else. Um, you can get a recommendation for the science one. Is that? Okay. okay, thank you. That is your Fine. pride. <laughs> Good stuff. Wait, what did everyone use as a prompt? We well, went with uh, Lost in a Strange City, as that was the prompt. You would you not go with write Lost about pies. That's fine. It's the kind of anarchy we've been fostering. Oh, I definitely time. wrote about only pies. <laughs> yeah. I thought we could pick. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, no, I think you said we could pick. What? Okay, fine. <laughs> yes. I think Martin said. Okay. Waiting on Martin to send his phenomenal. Oh, there is. He sent my other email address, which is you know, oh, yeah. quite a thing to do. What's the cat's Ooh. name? Purd. Purd. Purdine. Purdine. Purd. 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 
Kitty, kitty. <laughs> yeah, I feel like we need like a, a newsletter, like a standoff, like a debate between the newsletters. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, well I send out the free prompts with mine and blah, blah, blah. I just want Bethany, to your debate. newsletters are always really good when they turn up. When they turn up. Yeah, I don't remember the last time I sent one. <laughs> As long, as long as you're not doing that whole thing where you just email out when you have a new release. No, I literally, I was holding off because I have a, a prequel to Tracker that I want to give for free. So like that's my next newsletter is like, here's a free book for you as a thank you. So sign up for my newsletter. Uh, but oh, it's yeah. been being proofread for a while. Have a read of this. Newsletter Ninja. I have heard good things about that. I would recommend it. There is a also, you should check out Shannon SD Houston Huston did a video on her use of Story Origin to distribute her reader magnet and use newsletter swaps. Oh, interesting. And I will, I, while, while I would never want to brag about the size of my mailing list, I would say that newsletter swaps have actually been much more cost effective than the Facebook ads I was doing before. So. I'd love to, yeah, we'll have to chat sometime. I'd love to hear how you like went about that and stuff. Cause I do want to build my newsletter. I just, you know, I feel like I have analysis paralysis. I get that too. You kind of feel yeah. like there's so much advice going on. You just don't know where to start. Yeah. But... Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like my stuff isn't interesting. So unless I have something to give people or whatever, I feel like I'm like, what's the point? But... This is the thing. My life is not interesting. I beg to differ. Mine is mine is very interesting. You oh, should get sign up to my newsletter. Hi Ben, good to see you. You're here. Hi Ben. Ben. Hi, ben. How many like words has Ben done? Um, well, Ben is dead to us because he bought Adrian's t-shirt. Yeah, I jog like on. I like Ben. Yeah, literally jog on, or in his case, right on. I know. I, I like, like Ben already. Content. Yeah, my, my brothers uh, are big runners. We, I'm not, but I love his like little metaphors. I went Thanks. jogging once and I nearly um, died. I don't like running. I love walking work? and hiking. Does it count as work if he's working from home? I'm getting work done. So if anything, he's procrastinating uh, with our shenanigans. Or maybe he just wants to hear beautiful stories that we wrote about okay. how, wants to hear how interesting we are and then sign up to our newsletters. I mean, I was about to say, in terms of the. Um... <laughs> I was about to say, in terms of the newsletter, what I tend to do is I like to have a thing to write about so it gives me motivation to like do something that month. So I can say, hey, I did this in my this this month. I like that. Uh, that's like hacking your brain. I like that. Yeah. I've got like, I came up with like 40 odd subjects for uh, newsletters. Um, you put yeah, and some of them, yeah. And I like one subject, but then that subject could be like two or three newsletters, like different aspects of that subject. I like it. We'll let him off because we like Ben. It's also an hour before a three day weekend. Well, I see your three-day weekend there, and I rate you. Very much appreciated. I hope you find a bit of Farscape in it. <laughs> yes. Ben may have a three-day weekend this week, but we, in the lovely United Kingdom, we have a four-day weekend next week. So make of that what you will. Why is that? Because it's the Queen's Jubilee. It's the Queen's oh, birthday and we don't anniversary. Have a queen. Queen. I mean, I'm I'm the queen of my own castle. Yeah, you have many queen. many queens. You're the queen of YouTube, Bethany. You're the queen of your little part of the world. That's true. We'll dominate my it. channel. It's great. But can you believe she spent seventy years on the throne? I mean, if I've been that long on the toilet, I'd be a bit worried. Yeah, there's something wrong with that. But um, but. Hilarious. Jubilee. Jubilee. I love that word. My my niece is well, not my niece. One of my friends' daughters is named Jubilee. It's a good word, Jubilee. It needs to go on my list. It's cute. I like it. 
Do, Richard has you, a hey, for good and bad That's words. Good. Is there such a thing as a bad word? Apart from the swear word, obviously. Flange. I believe moist was on there. Moist. I don't mind moist. I quite like moist. What about phalange? I think that might be a made up word. Phalanges. My favourite word in Spanish is bufanda. I mean scarf. Um, if I had to pick one from my list of random, a good word, panopticon. Polyphonic. A made up word from Doctor Who. <laughs> no, it's yeah, actually, it's actually what they mean. Martin doesn't know his classics. I love the word morose. I don't know why. I think it's pretty. Oh, because it's morose. morose. It's a good one, right? Verb. That's another good word. That almost, that almost sounds rude, doesn't it? Verb. It does. <laughs> but it's not. So, um, shall we read some flash fiction? Yes. I'm curious yes. to see what you guys do. It didn't exist an hour ago. God, Look what so we've made. He's so naggy. Is whatever his name is, Martin. <laughs> Keeping us on track. How dare he? Yeah, Martin. Right, we're going to start with Star Wars. <laughs> oh, I haven't pressed the button yet. Hang on. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, that oh, that must be Bethany's because it's all right. Uh, well, I'm gonna, I will. I just want to say. Apoplectic. 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 Sharp words. Right, I'm going to have to zoom in because we all don't want to be squinting. Is that better, everyone? Okay. Yes. So, Bethany, would you like to take it away? Sure. Let's do that. I'm going to read off of my own screen. You do that. My eyes are something else. Okay. Let's get there. All right. I still don't know how you managed to keep that bush alive, my mother said, pinching down the sides of the pie crust. The edges were scalloped, like her apron. I shrugged. It just grows and grows. And we made pie when it exploded with fruit. When June rolled around and the plant hunched with the weight of the berries, we took up the same posture, bending over the table, making three dozen pies or so. They froze nicely. The crispy top didn't look as nice when they came out of the freezer, but the tart and sweet combination of the fresh berries managed to taste exactly the same. She don't take, she don't like to take care of the outside stuff, Tim said. You ought to take care of it. It's not like you to let things go like that, my mother said. Again, wiping the flour from her hands and plucking a rogue berry from the table, popping it into her mouth. Mama died that spring and the bush followed along with her. It was a sign. I cried when I dug up the dry and dead bush, a reverse burial of sorts. I winced when I shoved it in the debris bin. Tim punched it down. I flinched when the lid snapped shut. Then I buried myself under the blankets, suffocating in darkness. The dark was tart, like a blueberry. It was sharp. I wanted to use that point of darkness to shove that tartness into my veins, have a piece of mama with me or something. Instead, I buried another layer of blankets over me, and then another, Maybe I was buried deeper than the roots of that stupid blueberry bush were. All right, enough. I was hauled out from under my makeshift grave by Tim. You got to get yourself in order. He hauled me into the car, gripping my arms so tightly that when he finally let go, little blue dots sprouted on my pale arms like blueberries. You're going to see, go see Dr. Pike. Tim was smart, said he had a head full of brains, and I believed him. He said I could stop seeing the therapist if he decided the doctor was a schmuck. I simply stared at the blueberry bru bruises on my arm. I pictured Dr. Pike to be the squat man with a large mouth like a fish. Instead, she was tall like an asparagus, hairdo to match. There wasn't one of those fancy couches to lay on either, just two chairs pointing at each other, a desk along the wall, and the asparagus. Let's just get to know each other, Dr. Pike said. See what's going on. I nodded. Do you like blueberries? She nodded. I do. One of my favorites, actually. Do you? They remind me of my mother. That's not really an answer to my question, the doctor said. And I saw Dr. Pike again. It took only 14 more sessions for me to realize that Tim's head was not full of brains, just bad ideas and hot air. It took a full year to realize my mother's love wasn't actually a mother's love. It was weak, benign, failing at the roots and covering up with pretty words. Tim left a year and a half into the sessions, right when I asked if he'd start joining me. 
Is it okay? I asked the doctor. Is it okay to miss her? Of course, she said. Is it okay to mourn her even though I realize I don't like her? Didn't like her? Grief is funny that way. I think that's more than okay. I started making pies again. It was hard to make crusts without mama's scalloped apron to look at. And when it cooled and was sitting on a table, I realized it was perfect, the best pie I'd ever made. So I stuck my fist in it. In the middle, I smashed my hand through the crust so hard blueberry filling exploded, splattering against my apron and skin. I brought a hand to my lips, watching the blueberries run down my hand like blood. I licked it. It was bitter, then sweet. Ta-da. That was creepy. I really liked it. I um, love me some extreme me... vengeance. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of made me think a little bit um, of what was the one in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory who turned into a blueberry? Oh, I don't remember. I know what you're talking about, though. Yeah, the run that was. Salt. No, she turned into a nut. <laughs> No, no it's a chocolate TV. guy. <laughs> oh, maybe she was one already. But yeah, no, that was really good. But that was really creepy. And it's had that usual sense of just something being off. Yeah, I think that's kind of grief, though, in a sense. And yeah. Violet Beauregard? Oh, Violet, Violet Beauregard. Beauregard. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah, I just love the kind of atmosphere. You managed to build such a world in such a short amount of time. It just felt really kind of well realized. You kind of felt like you got to know those characters very quickly, and you, it was like you'd been playing that one for ages. So that was really good. Well done. Thanks. I have a few things that, like, obviously I'll want to change and whatnot and add, but we'll we'll see. Really good turns of phrases as well, like you know, using the food yeah. description, which we might usually when you describe something to food, it's in a positive way, but in some respects it was kind of um, negative or, you know, that was good. Um, Thank you. <laughs> suddenly crying plant, it's watery too. <laughs> uh, to the food comparisons. Uh, we had a very brief return by Adrian. Hello. Um, <laughs> the manifestation of pain is so visceral. Hot puffing. Yeah. Oh, it's really good. really good so well done bethany thanks now let's do the next one which is martin hey it's a guy i am <laughs> <laughs> just one last comment for you bethany while martin prepares ben will know what happens next turns into a giant peach okay like speaking of peaches I, all, I had this whole thing in my head about I wanted to compare Tim's head as a peach and how, like, she, like, yeah, I had this whole thing in my head and I just ran out of time. So I love that you mentioned peach because peaches were going to be in there. Like, sorry, continue. <laughs> okay. Martin, when you're ready. I'm just imagining Adrian at work and someone's like, yeah, can I get a room key, please? And he's like, shh, Bethany's writing about pie. <laughs> And I thought his job was to draw, was to collect um, space shuttle pilots. No, that's his hobby. He keeps telling us this. It's not his <laughs> job. <laughs> when you're ready, Martin. Green limes, red peppers, the smell of jarred spice. Lord Kelso walked the market of Newton Landing. Everything was more exotic than he would find at home in the Summer Isles. His father had sent him here as an emissary, but as little of re reality had been explained to him. The chaperone had been explaining the history of the city, where it seemed nothing had really happened, certainly not the fashions of the last 20 years going. So Kelso had ducked out to see what the sights and sounds and smells of this market were. The novelty had worn off fast, and he could no longer find his way back. He had offered a local 100 quartlets to guide him back, more than the simpleton would make in the next two years, but he had just laughed in his face. Apparently, the Bank of Bolin was the last currently currency exchange that would accept his local coin, and that was a week's ride from here. He carried none of the local tender. He usually wouldn't have quartlets either, but he had people for that. But where were they? Probably running from the dragon. 
The streets burned, the people too for the most part. The fire was everywhere. Five, someone shouted. Kelso looked to see a man in naval attire in front of a bakery. What are you doing? asked Kelso. Rating pies, the man replied angrily. He ran a cutlass through a young man running from the dragon. The man dropped to his knee in pain, knocking the table from which the irate pirate was judging pies for a live audience in exchange for monthly donations and several pies, which were piping hot, flew up and hit the dragon's defenseless underbelly. It dropped mid-flight into the sea. Lord Kelso was given the key to the city, so he found the gate, but not his way back, which is what he'd actually been after. Such a waste of time. Snaps, I like that. <laughs> Good, that was funny. I like that very much. That's cute. Way to use no, every prompt in there. <laughs> one does what one wants. That mm -hmm. no, was good fun. I kind of like, there was one line that I think we really wrote that was the, the streets burned, the people too for the most part. It's like almost, yeah. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. I Big game of throwing me. So, are you saying, Martin, that the giant too. pie? Are you saying that the giant pie launching catapults both have pinpoint accuracy and can't hit anything, depending on what the plot demands? Yes. They kill the dragon. Also, a little known good. fact is that uh, pies are instinctively drawn to dragons. Dragon is back on the Behind the dragons. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't about waffles, it was about pies. <laughs> yeah. Waffles wouldn't be so good. Pies, mm -hmm. there's to be pies. Are they are there pies still in the tin or just pies on their own? They're on their own. Okay, who's next? Oh Gary's next. Ooh. Okay. Checking I'm not on mute. Um, yeah. Um, when you ready, Gary. Okay. Uh, Billy sat in his Uber expectantly. This is the first time he had a self-drive. It's kind of annoying because he wanted to chat up the driver and make conversation. He thought he'd just start with the basics like where's good to eat, the places to go and see. Looks like that wouldn't happen now. He sat in the back thinking the safety of the front seat would be good, but there was a screen attached to the back headrest, not helpful. The wheel of the car suddenly turned into, in a smooth direction and he was off. He hadn't thought of this before now, he'd only really had a few seconds to think about things anyway. He put his seatbelt on before he even realised there was no driver. The doors locked themselves, Billy tried the door handle lightly and nothing happened, but a head came into view on screen. Hi there, I'm Victoria, your assistant. Let me know if there's anything I can help you with. The car cruised down the road at a, at a leisurely pace, but it, as it turned the corner onto the freeway, it picked up speed. Billy was panicking now. Why him? Why didn't Uber tell him it was a self-drive car? It had a photo of the driver. Then he stopped and double-checked the screen. The photo on the screen of Victoria. That's who the photo of the driver was. The car sped down the freeway at some speed now, and it changed lanes swiftly. This was the scariest part yet. How the hell could this be safe? Billy's hands hovered over the door handle as a blue light started flashing. Victoria came up on screen. This is a perfectly safe. This is a perfectly safe vehicle, and has been tested to incredibly high safety standards. The door handles won't function in the proper manner until you've reached your destination. Something struck Billy. He for his. The voice didn't sound computerised at all. It sounded incredibly natural. Who is this Victoria and how does she know about the door handles and how to get there? Surely she's just a computer generated nobody. Billy noticed the car indicating this time and braced himself, his palms sweating as much as his forehead now. He wished he hadn't decided to wear a tee under his actual shirt for the job interview he was headed to. Well, Gary, my thoughts are that was neither romantic nor a comedy. That was actually um, a pretty, um, pretty gripping thriller. Yeah, I thought it was yeah. a very good kind of like commentary on like driverless cars. What happens if they go kind of like awry in the future? So that was a really well done. 
I think it was about to get very romantic and very funny. There you go, Martin's got it. I um I only remember that I had a genre in the second part of the writing. Um, <laughs> so that's where he thinks about Victoria for the first time. And um I feel like I would go like the job interview is then with like the real Victoria person. So what you're saying is Gary that it's Victoria's secret. Ah, um, <laughs> that might be that name might be taken. I, I think I think what's good is you could go in, in one of several ways with that story. Like I, I identify the sort of creepy thriller aspect. Yeah. Kind of good, but you could go for the romantic comedy, but yeah, no, really good. Yeah. Um, a, a dark comedy. She's an upcoming yo young go getter. She's a sentient car. How will they make it work? <laughs> it's not, it will, it, Mark, it's almost like that episode of Doctor Who where um, that guy's um, girlfriend gets reduced to a paving slab and they somehow still manage to have a full romantic relationship, which is horrifying. Did anyone see Knight Rider? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gary's really in the 80s. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know he was doing that with the car. Well, I think... Good suggestions here for Maggie. Oh, I like Victoria talking him out of his panic attack. Yeah. Personally, I'd yeah, like to see you again, Gary. Positive. Uh, on Gary's future tech. No, I liked it. It definitely came across thrillery, like those like short sentences, the like very analytical way of like observation. I was like getting nervous. <laughs> See, Gary, you should jack in the whole screenwriting and come write some novels. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, I do want to write a novel. I, I do. When is the problem? Robo Rotica. Yeah. Oh, yes. There we go. That is she a robot? I suppose that's also been around. That's actually a good question. Is she a robot or is she just sort of like some woman in like a dark room controlling this car trying to bring him? Yeah. That's still kind of creepy, though. Yeah. Martin. It reminds me of what was the one with like Joaquin Phoenix and the computer with uh, her or something like that. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. So even more sinister. Yeah. Um, we we filmed in Glasgow, I believe. Yeah. In Scotland. It's pretty good. Well done, Gary. Should we go on to the next and possibly. Who, who's the next the one? Flash. Sorry? That's all the flash written. It's uh, been a uh, <laughs> very nice evening. I feel like uh, I'm missing nice something. Hmm. Oh, 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 I, uh, I was looking about to hold this up, and you, you, then you cut me off the screen. Oh, you bastard. <laughs> okay, well, I suppose, I suppose we should lower the tone with my piece. Hooray, <laughs> down it goes. I shall read. This is my attempt at fantasy. Ooh. So uh, yes, a uh, Ready Player One. Sorry, Ready Player One meets Taxi Driver. <laughs> that's really good. That's my that's that's my comps for this one. Gary, you should get uh, Maggie to do your uh, taglines. Yeah, thanks, Maggie. Yeah. Ben, who's her? That's the anyway. film. Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> I should now read my amazing slash possibly crap piece of fantasy fiction. <clears throat> I'm going to read from the screen. Arwen's head spun as the orange sky burst into life all around him. He didn't know how he'd got here, or even where here was. He remembered the library with Turquoise, yes, and that big bubbling pot, and all those stood around watching the moonlight erupting through the windows of the Great Hall. He remembered the coldness of the metal spoon in his hand. He raised his left hand. Where there had been coldness down, there was numb skin, pallid grey from healthy pink. Getting to his feet, Arwen stumbled. He felt like it weighed as much as the moon. Dizzy, stumbling and fumbling, he lurched forward. Ow! he yelled, feeling a sharp, angular pain in his midriff. The cart clattered away down the cobbled street. Watch it, the man driving harumphed. Arwen stood back, his eyeballs bulging. The man stopped. What are you looking at, kid? You. You're... Never seen an Omniclops before, the man said, winking his single jewel eye with a huge flap of shriveled skin. Bloody normie. And just fell down. Arwen shook his head. 
the inside sloshing like an egg scrambling inside its own shell. Whatever had been in that potion can't have been right. Turquoise, he called down a dark alley, the buildings above looming and tottering. At the end of the alley was a ray of crimson light. He walked forward, seeing something glint. Where the hell are you? No answer, not even from the wind which blew down the narrow opening. Arlen stumbled towards the flittering ring of ruby light, watching the edges dance with tranquility. He glanced up. Indigo clouds blotted out the sky, but the ray of claret light cut through them. The clouds sidled past as the wind pushed them onwards, parting around the column. Then he looked down, kneeling. He held out his hand. The air was like gelatin. He pushed forward, grunting. Around him, doors clattered and slammed. A cosmic wind whipped through his hair and tattered clothing. Oi! A large woman with a flat, pig-like nose hollowed out of a window that faced the alley. What tricks have you brought with us? Another door opened. Teetering on tiny legs, a giant fuzzy peach urged. <laughs> Two yellow eyes, daggered with disgust, flickered open. Down, boy, the peach boomed. You've brought Armageddon upon us all. The peach sobbed, collapsing to its knees. Arwen reached towards the column of light, seeing the cobbles on the other side shimmering through the energy. Gritting his teeth, he tore his arms around and pushed them into the beam. He expected, well, something different to what he got. The column of light felt solid, as though it was completely, though it was completely transparent. And hovering in the dead centre, the spoon. He fell forward, holding on to the spoon. It didn't move, not one inch from where it was suspended, the column of energy enveloping him. He turned around, fully enclosed. Turkful, he asked. Here, a voice trilled, and on the walls of the column he saw Turkful's face, and only his face, following him around. <laughs> well done. I was, I was trying to go for this kind of like fairy tale gone wrong kind of city where it's like you've got um, Humpty Dumpty, Cyclops, <laughs> yeah. big women, and then a giant peach. I yeah, I was like Harry Potter meets um, Willy Wonka. I love it. <laughs> I like um, the use of the word harumphed. And then like when yeah. the guy shook his head and it sounded like eggs being shaken in the shell. I liked that description a lot. I kind of feel yeah. if I had more time to develop that, that could be kind of really interesting. Yeah, What's having a uh, good word spreadsheet open as you write? Sorry? You have your good word spreadsheet open on the set. I'm just picking words out of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, um, I kind of enjoyed writing. I did enjoy writing that. I, would, I, think, I think there's legs in that idea. And legs always, on the beach. Mean, yeah. yeah legs I, the the place. I just wanted the job to have like the sort of cartoon like spindly legs that it's kind of wobbling on. It's got like evil kind of like slanty eyes. You know, just not friendly, if you know what I mean. It was funny when you mentioned a peach earlier, Bethany, and I thought, oh, if only you knew what I got in store. <laughs> Your peach is going to be, never mind. It's just <laughs> my, evil, my evil peach. Mine is just going to be a description. <laughs> it was just a peach. Very James Patterson, anyway. is that what I saw? <laughs> There's not a single pineapple in this story. I'm I know, sorry. it's awful. It's not like there should be a pineapple. Maybe the pineapple is like the last half of the book. He's the <laughs> savior. Yeah, I think I think that's definitely a concept I want to kind of explore in more words, but it doesn't really count as flash fiction. It's just like a well, yeah. if it's more than flash, it's it's a short story. So you know what else yeah. is a lot of fun to like put in your newsletters? It's short stories. That's true, yeah. Yeah, you should, you know, there's nothing wrong with giving your readers some fun short stories. I, I, I know why I'm giving I, you I, advice. I, I, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I have actually said, part of my news is you get free exclusive fiction, but I haven't given anything away in quite a while because <laughs> it means writing stuff. Yeah. And well, I've got enough fun as it is. I think my but next I mean, like, newsletter. What about all of these? Like you do flash aha, and I, I don't know. I, I, I've got all of these saved for me to kind of work on later, so they're kind of there, ready for me to work on when I want. You can I put mean, it together next... like a free little ebook for your newsletter subscribers, and be like, "Here's a bunch of fun short stories." Like, oh, you just publish flash aha the book. Yeah. 
Yeah, but who gets the royalties? Yeah. I, I could just I could just change that into fresh aha. Yes. Hey, oh. no. <laughs> that's the romance ripoff. <laughs> I'm afraid that's already taken. Don't go. <laughs> Um, I, mean, I will be talking about in my next newsletter and uh, some of the kind of struggles I've had with kind of balancing all the various plates I've got spinning. Um, so, yeah, for that uplifting content. Well, that's good because we've all been worried about you. <laughs> Thank you. Do you have any good advice you're going to share? Now I'm eagerly awaiting. Um, I think he's just going to say, it's horrible. I don't like it. I don't like any of you. <laughs> Um, I think my main advice is going to be just remember you're your own boss and you know you're only accountable to you, so don't feel um, too pressured. Um, it was kind of inspired a bit by I think unless you're on YouTube you know, and a flash of her. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's just because I've I've kind of realised I've I may have taken a little bit too much on, and I've actually broken my doctrine of project monogamy, and I'm just going to get that comment right now. But uh, yeah, um, but yeah, it, it, I, I think I think with the newsletter, it's good to just kind of write a little personal update, and then batter people up with some free stuff. Yeah, I mean, like my free stuff is if you sign up for my newsletter, you get a PDF bundle of short stories that friends and I like put together. But I guess I just always feel weird about like sending out newsletters when I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Yeah, I know my approach to the news that is always just write it like I'm just writing to one person. It just happens to go to um, considerably more than that. Yeah, I think it's just my own self-consciousness getting in the way and I'm labeling it analysis paralysis. But I think I just need to like, set time aside. I actually, like, just do it. I actually think that is a very good thing to talk about in itself, the analysis paralysis. Um, yeah. I think... I think actually, especially in this kind of author choose, right? Sorry to go off on a bit of a tangent. Um, is there's just some kind of advice out there, like you're trying to want to soak it all up, but it's, some of it's kind of conflicting, and you end up just thinking, where do I start with all this? So sometimes you just have to you have to go forward, don't you? Um, ben, it's a very rude comment. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. We're not doing any merch for that. We're not doing any merch for that. Not yet, at least. <laughs> Martin, you were saying sorry? Sorry, dear. I, I don't have any of these problems because I'm marvelous. Okay. And super humble. How, how very humble and, you know, down to earth that is. <laughs> yes. Love if it. anyone wants this as an ebook who hasn't yet downloaded it, 99 cents for another. Two and a half hours. Get oh, it so what, did you get into the top 100 of your category in the end? Um, sort of. In that, no. But we did make it into <laughs> the uh, top 40 of hot new releases. Oh. That totally works. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty hot. But we got, I mean, we did get very close. I mean, I have read this book and it is very does it Does it tell you, like, how far up you're going? Is it, like, real time? Data on Amazon. Um, no, but there oh. are ways to sort of get an indication. What I would like in in Amazon is even if it's not like on the on the public sales page, it's meant to say, "Oh, your book got to this rank total. This is it was its highest rank that it ever achieved." Just so you know how high it got at some point in its kind of like life cycle. Oh, that That's would be nice. Because yeah. unless you kind of screenshot it when you're doing well in very commas, yeah. and it's gone. Do you know what I mean? It'd be nice for them to put like the author page saying, oh, this book, it's top ranking X, Y, and Z category got to this. And um, just so you can just kind of judge its performance, but alas, it's very kind of like um, transient, isn't it? I'm also, sure you could just... something that does that. It's probably like an extension that does that. Yeah. I mean, or what you could do is you could find one category in which it is very niche and totally unsuited for and just put it in that. So when it sells, it becomes a number one in like geometry textbooks for eight year olds or whatever. Well, the trick is to do that for categories it is suitable for and then you're a success. <laughs> but then you, then you don't get banned by Amazon. 
and then put in very small letters, number one in geometry books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think there's like been some frustrations where people will get that like top 100 in their like super niche category and then they label themselves as an Amazon bestseller when really you have to be top 100, 100 in all of Amazon to be yeah. technically really eligible difficult. for that. But like who can monitor that? Who's in charge of that? So people either don't know or they're like, oh, it sounds great. I got top 100 in Amish Something. fiction or whatever. It's not confirmed, but I have heard that uh, Jeff Bezos outsourced that to, all back to an underling. Of course he did. He How probably has many, many, many underlings. Like, <laughs> I'd, I'd imagine it's a bit like a Charlie in the Chocolate Factory kind of <laughs> set up. But it just with books flowing everywhere. Yes, I feel like I'm you need Columbus. to rename this title as like the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory themed flash. Yeah, <laughs> with peaches. We should just do a uh, magical factory episode. I'll be yeah. up for that. Yeah. That should be like around Christmas time because then you've got the Christmas elves as well. And, mm -hmm. Or maybe like thanks. Here's a frog. Santa's elves decide to form a union. Mm -hmm. Yay. We actually did some very exciting things for our Christmas edition. You should look that up. There were new graphics and everything. It was very, it was very festive, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How long has this been going on for? So, I don't know. Know. Be, okay. I will if you shush. So button it. <laughs> um, next month marks the one year. Flash anniversary of this here thing that me and Martin started on a whim. Um, so we haven't quite announced what's going to be happening for the Flash anniversary, but stay oh, tuned. So exciting. When you guys hear it, you're going to be like, oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, um, I'm sorry you haven't said it yet. Um, that's because Martin hasn't emailed it to me yet. Because we haven't discussed uh. it yet. <laughs> when you see it next month, you're going to be like, my word, they clearly knew what they were talking about when they the announced whole it. Time. Um, I don't know what we're going to do for the one. Yeah, I mean, it, it is kind of like amazing that we managed to do it for our whole year. Um, mm. Considering we kind of started it off as a fun... Your, your attention yeah. span is famously short. <laughs> that was a, a spin-off, wasn't it? No, it was a rip-off. Oh. It started no. as a rip-off, then it became a spin-off. Uh, that, that is going to go down in the Flash Aha history books. I think we started off as a as a rip-off of Kent Sean's Stone Drink and Live. Mm. And then we kind of spun it off into our own thing. We got our own things like the genre wheel, um, play your library cards. Like, no, we've had a good time doing this. And it's, it's, good, it's been good fun just getting all sorts on here. Yeah, so I know. Stuff. Yeah. Like Gary, play. Your second appearance. You yes. were on the first episode, Gary. I remember now. I was. I think I remember. Maybe I don't know. It was the one where Ken Shaw had to apologise for having a rifle on display behind. Oh yes, I do remember that. <laughs> I think we should. Um, can we do the um, play your library cards right again? No. Oh, can we do it? People here. Um, start doing outros then, Martin. We should probably start doing outros. Just um, that, man. Let's start with giving our lovely guests. Oh, well, right, we'll talk about you, shall we? <laughs> Mr. Who's, who's Bradley. Oh, I know. I watched the interview. <laughs> exactly. He was a good I, chat. I am one half of Bradley Lejeune. This is a uh, very good book. Why not uh, download it on Amazon and support uh, Flash Aha hosts in their other endeavours? Thank you and good night. Thank you. And um, let's let Bethany introduce herself. Hello, my name is Bethany Vota. I write thrillers and short story collections. Um, they are live everywhere, and there's audiobooks for Tracker and Scribbles and Scrawls. And sign up for my newsletter because I have more fun stuff coming out this year. And if you can't find me 
I don't know. I'm I'm all over the place. But yeah, happy to be here. <laughs> I don't know how to do this. Oh, I've forgotten. Oh, Gary's. Hello. I'm Gary Thomas. Thank you for having me. Uh, you can sign up to my newsletter at uh, garythomas.co.uk. And um, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter as GS Thomas Writer. And for those not aware of who I am, I'm Richard. I'm the author of this. Um, sign up to my newsletter and you'll get this for free. There it is, my free call. Um, that's good fun. This is always good fun. And what else do I do? Um, Jesus Christ, um, newsletter. Uh, I'm also the centre of attention on Books by Adrian's Tuba Book Tube Club thing, so definitely go and check that out. We've had lots of fun. And, yeah, this has been another thrilling, enthralling and amazing episode of Flash Our Heart. So thank you for joining us. He says, I'm talking so I can find the outro clip. <laughs> <laughs> So everyone, let's wave to the audience who joined us. Thank you all for coming. Um, Maggie says bye. Jenna says whatever that is. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Always good to have Jenna on side. And I should now click this button once I have stopped doing this. So bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye for now.